Johnny Mascal was a seven-year-old boy with his mother as his only family. Her unexpected death propelled his life into very challenging circumstances until something incredible happened to him. Johnny and his mom, Janice Mascal, lived in a small one-bedroom apartment in a little cozy farm town. They did not have many luxuries in life, but they had each other. Long walks in the countryside were one of their favorite activities together. There was also a park near their house where the two of them would go almost every day. This was Johnny's happy place, where he could play with his friends or some of the other people's dogs. Janice had a kind and patient nature and was a really good mother to her son. She would patiently throw or kick a ball with him until he was exhausted. Then they would lay down a blanket and eat a simple sandwich. To the two of them, it tasted like a meal fit for a king. Why tragedy often strikes such good people, no one knows. Janice had a job at a local bakery. It was close to their apartment, so she could walk to work. A friendly neighbor would look after Johnny when she was at work. The little boy would keep an eye on the clock all day long. When it was near 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he would go sit outside on the steps, waiting impatiently for his mother to return. At about 10 past 5, she would appear around the corner and he would run towards her, throwing his arms around her waist. Then she would pick him up and swing him around in the air before revealing some pastry treat for the day. One Wednesday afternoon, shortly after Johnny turned 7, he was going through the normal routine. That afternoon, he waited on the steps as usual, but his mother never came. About an hour later, the police came to the door and informed the neighbors that Janice had been killed in a hit-and-run accident. In a split second, Johnny was all alone in the world. He had never known his father and had no family to fall back to. For a week, he stayed with the elderly neighbors, but the day after the funeral, he was whisked off to the local orphanage, a fate he had never imagined. Life at the orphanage was awful. Johnny was small for his age and became an easy target for bullying. This boy had lost the only person that really meant anything to him, so he often cried himself to sleep. Time went by, but the pain in his heart did not get any better. In fact, some days it felt like it was getting worse. The only thing he wished for was for his mom to come back. If that could not happen, he wanted to go to her. Cry baby, the boys would shout when Johnny was sad. Your mom is gone forever. There's nobody left that loves you. In fact, we don't even like you. Johnny did not care much for how the boys felt, but he did not like them saying anything about his mom. He would get into fights with these bullies and always end up being the one getting hurt. To add insult to injury, when the staff at the orphanage intervened, Johnny was made out to be the villain and got additional punishment for something he had not done. The only escape Johnny had was on Sundays. When all the children were walking to the church, he would sneak out to the graveyard where his mother was buried and there he would sit for about an hour, talking to her. This was the best time of his week. At least, he felt close to his mother, the only one who had truly loved him. Every Sunday he would tell her, Mommy, I miss you so much. I want to be with you again. Will you please come and get me? Afterward, he would place a small wild flower on her grave, wipe his tears and sneak back into the group as they returned from church to the orphanage. Almost one year after his mother's death, he was visiting the grave again. He had settled into life at the orphanage somewhat, but he was simply existing. Life had little joy or prospects of becoming better. In a way, he had become accustomed to the bullying. But now, more than ever before, he wanted his mom to come and fetch him. That morning, after sharing his thoughts with his mom, he concluded the conversation with the following words. Mom, life is really hard for me here. I beg you, please take me to be with you. Then he sat there, crying almost uncontrollably when he sensed that someone was standing behind him. Wiping his eyes, he turned around, thinking he was finally caught out for skipping church and that he was now in serious trouble. To his surprise, it was a beautiful woman standing there. Why are you so sad, little boy? She asked. With the sun from behind her, she almost looked like an angel. And it took a few seconds for Johnny to gather his composure and respond to her. My mom is gone. I miss her so much. The woman held out her arms and gave Johnny a big hug. They sat there in front of the grave while she asked him about his life. She wanted to know about his father, where he lived, 
and if he had anyone to talk to, except for his mother. Then she also told them about her life. She had lost a little boy of her own about two years earlier, due to a strange illness. He would have been nine years old now, and she still missed him every day. Together, they walked to the grave of her son Stephen, and shed a tear for him as well. Before they parted ways, she introduced herself as Louise. The two of them agreed to meet again at the graveyard the next Sunday. Johnny lost track of the time that day and therefore was caught out for not attending church. The next Sunday, Louise waited in vain for Johnny, thinking that something surely must have prevented him from coming. She continued to go there for the next two Sundays, but still, there was no sign of the boy. That Sunday night, Louise had a dream. She dreamed that her beloved Stephen came to her. He took her by the hand and led her to his bedroom, where all his clothes and toys were still untouched. Then he opened the closet, took out his favorite basketball, turned around to his mom and said, Mommy, it's time. Then he held the ball out to her, and as soon as he put it in her hand, he was gone. Louis woke up in the middle of the night. This was no ordinary dream. It surely had some hidden meaning that she was yet to discover. She had the same dream for the next four nights and shared that with her husband, Michael. On the fourth night, there was a little twist that helped her understand. The dream was exactly the same, but when her son turned around to give her the ball, he changed into the boy from the park. Louise could barely wait for the sun to rise the next morning, as she and Michael had made the decision that night. Something amazing was about to happen. They got up at dawn and drove to the orphanage with only one mission in mind, to find little Johnny. As Louise and Michael entered the gates of the orphanage, there, under a tree in the corner, all by himself, sat the boy they were looking for. His head was down and his shoulders bent forward, drawing with a small stick in the sand. Stop the car, Louis shouted to Michael. When he stopped, she jumped out and ran toward Johnny. He looked up when he heard the approaching footsteps and then got to his feet, just in time for Luis to pick him up and swing him around in the air before hugging him close to her chest. Tears were running from her eyes. In the meantime, Michael had parked the car and joined his wife and the little boy under the tree. Johnny, would you want to come home with me and Michael? She asked through her tears. We want to adopt you. If you will let me, I would very much love to be your mommy. The rest of the story was a mere formality of adoption papers, but Johnny went home with his new parents a week later. Luis and Johnny were the answer to each other's prayers. Johnny felt as if his mom had heard his cries, allowing him to get a second chance at life with another loving mother and also a very good father. Luis in turn knew that Johnny would fill the hole that the death of her beloved Stephen had left in her heart. All is well that ends well. What do you think of this story? Have you ever had a prophetic dream like this? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.